Game nice. started. Okay, T Sulf sixty two. Let's see, what have I started with recently? Let's try D four. Uh, okay, you can avoid the French by playing c4. You get the uh, queen's gambit declined, a trash defense. Okay, against the tarash, you can play pawn takes, and if he takes back, you can take with the queen. Server announcement. <clears throat> or you can check first and then take with the queen if he takes this way. So he normally takes that way, and then you can fan kettle the bishop to attack the d-pawn. Okay, so he gave up right away. Sometimes they take and accept the isolated pawn. Other times they push, but usually the push is delayed for a while. So can I undermine immediately with e4? Pawn takes, knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, queen e7, pinning the bishop. Queen e2, unpinning. Or maybe just grabbing on. No, it's defended. Okay, pawn to e4. Pawn takes. Knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes. Pawn is defended, the bishop is loose. Queen e7 attacks, bishop, queen e2 defends. I've got an isolated pawn and he has an advanced c pawn. I guess I don't like it that much. Um, <clears throat> let's develop the uh, bishop pin that knight. Maybe e5 will have a little more punch in it with that knight pinned. He can pin too, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. Check. Knight c6 defends the bishop. Is there any follow-up after that? Well, I guess uh, if I hit the bishop, he's going to have to take, isn't he? Maybe not. He could retreat to... Um... Check. Yeah, he could retreat, I guess. But um, I thought he would have to take because this uh, pawn on d5 would be loose. <clears throat> Okay, I'll just develop normally and castle. He's put a stop to this e4 idea. But the bishop is always uh, looking at this pawn, so there may be chances later to undermine it. <clears throat> now, let's see, do I want to hit the loose bishop? with the knight, knight here. And where is that bishop going? I can just drop back to uh, e6, I guess. Coming forward, here, 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 here. Doesn't look uh, particularly good. It could go to um, e5, I guess, e4. e6 or e4. <clears throat> I didn't think that was so good. H3, and then where? Okay. So, E4 now, pawn takes. Bishop takes, I takes, and I take the queen. So I can play e4 now. Um, okay, if I just retreat the bishop, he will um, win the pawn. So I have to take, eh, maybe I could have played e d, e4 takes d5. And I'll play it here. 
Okay, so he opposes my bishop. I have this uh, passed pawn here, which may be good later in the game. The knight could go to f4 now. Um, yeah, why not? Can't really do anything about uh, his idea if he wants to trade this bishop. He can just do it. Oops, oops, oops. <laughs> I walked into a tactic. Check. Queen here, check. Yeah, my uh, knight's not defended. I have to defend this way. So if he just takes the queen, we go right into an end game. I'm where my king is on this square f3. It's not too bad, though. I have a protected pass pawn, and he has a potential passer on the queen side if he advances these, but mine is uh, closer. So I would say this is a good end game for me. <clears throat> Check. But we will find out. Let's see if I missed anything else. Knight here to hit the knight here. Knight to d5 is a good square hitting the c3 pawn. Um, but I believe these exchanges help me. <clears throat> so I will go for it. Knight takes, rook takes, knight takes, and then the king comes forward. And uh, how is he ever going to stop this passed pawn? I'm just quicker, quicker than Check. he is. So let's just go into this endgame and see if I am right. <laughs> you can play knight to f3 check. Check. That gives up a pawn. Probably not the best move there. Check. Uh, he wanted to go to that square. That's that's a good square. But I can attack the knight there. And grab Check. that pawn. And he can grab that pawn. So now we're in this situation where it's uh, kind of a race. But I'm closer. My pawn is closer to cleaning than his pawns. Check. And this king is a little bit further away from the action. One, two, three, four, and queen. Right, so he goes to a square and check the king from here. Just want to make sure I'm not losing the pawn. If he checks the king, I just step forward once again. If he, okay, I have to calculate. If he, uh, if I advance and he sacrifices the knight and I take and then he advances again, it'll be here. Then knight here, pawn here, knight here. Yeah, so bing, bing, bing. I get there in time. Calculations are easier in the end game in some respects because you just have to be able to count correctly. But you always have to make sure you start with the right move. So it's uh, takes, takes, then it's one, two, three, four, and it's one, two, three, and I'm there ahead of him. Any way you calculate it. And okay, he goes for that. And uh, it doesn't matter about the other pawn because um, my C pawn is stopping it. <clears throat> and it doesn't matter about that pawn. Or does it? Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and coin here. So now it's uh, checkmate. <clears throat> 
checkmate. <laughs> a nice, uh, nice little self-mate. He walked under the corner so I could checkmate him. Okay, um, so that was interesting. I'm going to upload this into a postmortem. See you guys later. Bye. <laughs>